This is RCN Magazine's audio. The latest articles for nurses, nursing support workers and nursing students. Hello, I'm Kim Scott, the editor of RCN Magazines, and joining me is Pat Cullen, the RCN's General Secretary and Chief Executive. Pat, hello, how are you? I'm very well, Kim, and it's great to see you. Well, these are unprecedented times. We're about to embark on our biggest ever strike ballot. If enough members turn out to vote, and vote in favour, this will be the first time in the RCN's history that nursing staff across the UK go on strike. So here's the detail. The ballot is related to NHS pay. An NHS pay award has been announced in England and Wales, and an NHS pay offer has been made in Scotland. In Northern Ireland, we're still awaiting a pay announcement for HSE staff. But across the board, it's unacceptable. We've been campaigning for a pay rise of 5% above inflation, but all the deals and offers fall far short of that. Pat, why is now the right time for nursing staff to go on strike? Well, I think the answer is in the pay award that's been offered. It's a derisory pay award members have told me they have found it an insult. If we are trying to keep the brilliant nurses we've got, if we're trying to address the thousands and thousands of vacancies that we've got, and if we're trying to really seriously stop the health service from falling over the precipice, then we have to do something about pay. How important is it that members turn out to vote? It's vitally important. It's vitally important for this college because the voice of our members is the voice of the college. We will take the action that our members direct us to take and they do that through uh, their ballot. Of course, I believe that they should be voting to take action, to have their voice heard, to stand up for what is right and what is just and what they're entitled to and to stand up and speak out for their patients as they always do. But Regardless of that, it's their democratic right to vote within this ballot. And there are certain thresholds, aren't there, that we need to meet in terms of voter turnout for any strike action we consider to be lawful. Is that right? Yes. At least 50% of our eligible members must return uh, their ballot papers And the majority of those members must must also vote in favour. So this is a a really, really important time. How likely do you think it is that members will vote in favour of strike action? I have been out meeting with hundreds and hundreds of members. And I truly believe that the anger and frustration and challenges that our members are facing every single day trying to care for their patients has pushed them to a position where they will absolutely vote within this ballot. So, you know, never say always that you know the answer, but I am feeling pretty confident that our members will vote in this ballot for for action. Why do you think that's the right choice? I say that with, with a heavy heart, to be quite honest, that members will vote for action but they've been left with no alternative. It's simply and very straightforwardly the fact that we have a government who is refusing to listen to the voice of the nurse, which is the voice of the patient. And as long as they continue to do that, the the nurse will stand up for their patients and they will take whatever action is available to them to make sure that patients are cared for. And this this is, again, symptomatic of them having no alternative but to move to this position. How would the RCM protect patient safety if nursing staff were to go on strike? Well, I think you only have to look at the experience of the college leading the first strike in Northern Ireland in 103 years. So the first thing to say is, I think that says its own story, doesn't it? Nursing staff don't take action like this easily. 103 years and nurses have never taken strike in this college. But they did in Northern Ireland in 2019 and 2020. They did that very safely. They did it effectively, but they did it with a really steady hand and a steady head. And 
throughout that period of action, when those nurses stood on picket lines, they didn't abandon their patients. They made sure that their patients were still cared for in every single ward and department. But they also took action throughout that period. They also made sure that patients understood the reasons why they, they needed to do what they did. At this current moment in time, with the vacancy rates that we've got within our healthcare system, patients are facing risk and harm every single day. And why? Because we haven't the nursing staff to care for our patients in the way that we want to care for them and the way that we should be caring for them. So no nurse taking action will add any further risk to those patients that are needing services throughout that day. We will manage that in the same way as we did in Northern Ireland and we will continue to do that right throughout the period of action. And as I understand it, the way that strike action is conducted is that the unions, the RCN, would negotiate with with employers for staffing levels in different settings so that patient safety is preserved. I think that's called derogations, is that right? So members should be reassured by that, as they were in how it worked with, in Northern Ireland? For every nurse that I spoke to uh, in England over this last number of days, that's the very concerns they raised with me. How will we keep our patients safe if we move to take the action that we wish to take as a consequence of where we've been placed? And I'm able to reassure those nurses that during any period of strike action as we did in Northern Ireland, in their workplaces, we will place uh, what is known as a local dispute and strike committee. A very senior member of our team in the Royal College of Nursing will be responsible for leading that committee. But in those workplaces, we will have clinical experts that will guide and direct us right throughout that period of action on those days. And with those people, we will determine the safe staffing levels that we wish to leave back um, and that our nurses expect us to place within their workplaces. Um, and then those nurses that we will remove from their workplaces to take action on those days. So that will be managed very carefully. It'll be managed with an evidence base and it'll be managed given the experience that we've got in Northern Ireland as well. So that it might look a bit like a Christmas Day service or a night duty service, as I understand it. Yes, it will. And leading up, so if our members vote for strike action in any of the countries, for leading up to the day that we would designate for action, um, we will be asking those employers to submit to us their duty rosters for at least six weeks prior to the day of action and also then their previous Christmas Day rosters that they would use in those designated areas. And then with the, the local team, we will sit down and determine what is the minimum staffing that we will place in those services that are subject to action on those days. So there will be a lot of thought, a lot of carefulness and a lot of consideration given to ensure that we still continue to keep patients safe, but also keep our nursing staff safe on those days. So Pat, we know you as Pat the leader, <laughs> but I'd like to talk a little bit about Pat the human being <laughs> and just how you're feeling about it all right now. Um, I've been thinking a lot about that over this last number of days, because when you take on something as important as this for every single member of the public, the gravity of what we're, we're facing into and the responsibility I feel on my shoulders, first and foremost as a nurse, never leaves me. It doesn't leave me night or day. It never did in Northern Ireland and it's not now. But what keeps me going and what leaves me being able to put my head on the pillow at night and know that I'm doing the right thing is speaking to our members and looking at each and every nurse that I speak to and seeing what they have to go through every single day and the challenges that they're trying to battle with to look after their patients, but also the personal challenges of the humiliation of having to go to food banks, the humiliation of having to look for second-hand uniforms for their children. And if I ever needed a confirmation that this is the right thing to do, speaking to every one of those nurses and standing looking at them, I get that confirmation in abundance. 
I also believe for me, first and foremost, anyone that knows me, and in Northern Ireland they used to say to me, if they, if they cut me open, there's a nurse written in the inside of me. Um, it's an absolute privilege to be a nurse. I feel totally privileged being a nurse. We are the only profession um, that is actually with the patient and the person from actually before they're born right through to the day that um, they depart from this world. There's no one else has that privilege of being able to do that. Um, and I've never taken it for granted and I've never met a nurse really that takes it for granted either so I would suggest to any government walk in the shoes of a nurse for just a day travel with them when they actually um, are trying to calculate and tot up their bills at the end of the month and they know there's not a single solitary penny in their bank account to do it travel with those overseas nurses that contact me now on a daily basis and say please can you help me get back to my country of origin because I can no longer live here and I think anyone that would search their soul as a political leader would only stand back and say they need to do the right thing because if you do the right thing for a nurse you do the right thing for a patient and what a way what a way to treat the very people that provides care for our our population day in day out the very people that carried us all through the pandemic it's just not right morally ethically or professionally this is not the way to treat a nursing profession why do you think why do you feel you're the right person to get strike action of this scale across the line i think it's because um, I've never left the value of nursing behind me. And no matter what position I've held within the profession, and no matter what table I've been brought to, and I've ha- had the privilege of sitting at many of what is known as the top tables, I feel at every table I go to that I have the full responsibility of every single nurse with me at that table. And that has always guided me to make the right decisions for nursing, that I never leave a table thinking it was about me or the conversation was about me. Every conversation I engage in, every decision I make and every table I go to, regardless of who's at that table, whatever politician or whatever position they hold, I feel the enormous responsibility of my profession on my shoulders to do the right thing for them and for the patients that they care for. So that perhaps maybe leaves me in a position that I've never lost those values of actually knowing what's the right thing to do for patients first of all and I still practice as a nurse and um, so I know what it's like to sit with patients still to this very day so I do believe I'm probably well placed but I would never take for granted the profession and the trust that they put in me to do the right thing for them. And what about our members who don't work in the NHS? Gosh um they equally get a pretty raw deal and there is no doubt about that and there's part of that that I really struggle with because our focus and attention may give the impression at the minute that our priority is with those nurses that works within the NHS but those nurses working with independent healthcare services are equally as important and a priority for me It just so happens that the pay review body and the outcome of the pay review body um, applies to those nurses that are on agenda for change terms and conditions. But this college, since I moved into this position, have had a real key focus on what are the priorities for nurses working within the independent sector. Those nurses that are on the lowest possible wage as well that can be afforded to them. So they are our priority. We have a plan in place of how we want to improve their working lives and their terms and conditions, and they are definitely caring for the most vulnerable in our society. So they equally deserve a significant pay rise. They do deserve better terms and conditions, and they do deserve better support from this government. And they can help support this pay campaign too, right? Because if, if NHS wages improve, then presumably that would have a cascading effect to the independent sector. So by supporting this campaign, it may ultimately lead to better terms and conditions for them. And that's what we found in Northern Ireland. Every nurse within the independent sector stood 
firmly with their colleagues that was taking action within the health service in Northern Ireland. And it did most certainly have an impact because some of the improvements that we made in Northern Ireland around our staffing legislation increasing the number of students year on year within our universities so that we can have uh, an increase in the number of new recruits that we encourage into the profession all has an impact within the independent sector as well because nurses work everywhere as you know everywhere you see a patient you'll see a nurse so of course it will have an impact so we want members to get behind this campaign no matter where they work what can they do to help the cause the first thing that they can do is absolutely open their ballot papers. They need to complete those ballot papers and they need to return them by post because that's the legal um, requirements uh, for this ballot. And they also need to talk to their colleagues, those other nurses perhaps who have got questions or doubts in their mind if this is the right thing to do. The other thing that I would say to them is please talk to your patients and to members of the public, talk to your families and explain why we are doing what we're doing and the reasons for that and also take opportunities to speak to their political leaders within their own um, regions and ask them to search their souls in terms of their support that they can provide. It's never too late to pull back from this, but it will only, we'll only pull back and do the right thing when, when there's an offer on the table that will ensure that it's the right thing for nursing staff. Thank you, Pat, so much for your time today. I know how precious that time is. Uh, No doubt members will be seeing and hearing so much more of you in the weeks ahead. For more information about our pay campaign and upcoming strike ballot, visit rcn.org.uk forward slash fair pay. Find more RCN Magazine's content at rcn.org.uk slash magazines brought to you by the royal college of nursing